Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Wharton. I've been an entrepreneur since 1999 and I know firsthand how difficult it can be to build a business without the right mindset. This is a podcast for those of us who struggle with showing up in our business with confidence and authenticity, who resist taking big action because of fears and doubts, who know deep down that it's possible to create something bigger and yet you're not. This podcast combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset along with practical business tips to grow your business more easily in a way that feels aligned. This podcast features solo shows with me and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world, including my monthly co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey. My goal is to help you grow your business more quickly and easily by transforming your mindset. For me, mindset work is a lifelong practice, and I want to help you make a habit out of mindset work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, let's get into this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 234. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about how to create more ease and flow in business. This is something that is really, really important to me. I often work with clients on making business easier by transforming their business mindset. And when I work with both belief statements, but also with heart-centered energy work, a lot of times the language we use involves making business easier, making specific tasks easier. And I honestly believe that by working on our mindset, we can make business easier. That's not to say it's super easy and you can just kick back and do nothing, but we can do a lot of mindset work to make business easier. So before I get into today's episode, I wanted to mention, again, the new format of the podcast for this year. And as always, this is an experiment. I look forward to hearing what you think about it. But I've decided to stop having interviews on the podcast. I do, however, really enjoy doing interviews with people, so I have started to move the interviews over to my YouTube channel, and I'll be doing interviews over there. So if you go to hollywharton.com forward slash YouTube, you can find the latest interviews and other videos that I'm doing. I want to start to get back into doing more videos this year. I know I said that last year and it didn't happen, but I do really enjoy videos. It's just a matter of getting them into the schedule and making it happen. So what are we going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about some very practical tips, things that you can actually do to take action to create more ease and flow in your business. And because everything is, of course, related, these actions can also help you create more ease and flow in your life because business is not separate from life. So let me just launch into this. One of the things that you can do to create more ease and flow in business is to get energy moving. So moving energy to create flow in business and life. And one of the ways that you can do this is to declutter. Now, I know decluttering is a thing, you've heard of it, you've probably done it, but when was the last time you did it? Decluttering is not the kind of thing you can just do once and let it sit and think that it's done. It's something you've got to do on a regular basis, and how often you do that is up to you. It really depends on your individual situation. I have tried in the past to set up regular decluttering habits, and it's not really worked. Decluttering tends to be the kind of thing that I need to do when the mood strikes me, and then once it hits, it's just so easy. So for example, one of the things that I recently mentioned in the Facebook group was over the holidays, the end of last year, I was planning to do some decluttering. I wanted to declutter my office, and I wanted to go up in the loft and declutter some stuff there. And it didn't happen. And I was really disappointed with myself that I wasn't able to do it. But then shortly after the new year, it was like I got bit by the decluttering bug. And I just went through so many things. I went through my office. I went through old clothes. And I just did a really good declutter. Afterwards, I went through the whole house and I saged it. 
And then it still felt like it wasn't enough. And so I went and I lit the Palo Santo and I went through the house doing that. And it just felt great. And I really felt more energized myself. And it just really rekindled a lot of kind of energy of excitement for the coming year. So I know by the time this comes out, it's going to be mid-January. It's not too late to declutter. You can declutter any time of the year. And it I find that it really moves that energy around and it's something that's so subtle because you think just literally removing unwanted objects from my house and tidying things up, but it makes a big, big difference in your mindset because it does get that energy moving and it helps you to see things more clearly and it helps me to focus more. So decluttering, cannot recommend it enough. If you haven't done it lately, do it. Start with whatever's easiest. Don't feel like you have to do your entire house. Start with one room. Start with your office or start with a kitchen or start with your loft or start with your bedroom or your closet. Start wherever it seems easy and just do one thing. And I find that oftentimes if I just go in with the goal of doing one room or one part of my room, it really gets that energy going, I'm going to say again, and really makes me want to do the entire rest of the house, or at least a second room and then a third room. So decluttering moves energy and it really helps you see things more clearly, I think. So that's one thing you can do. And that helps create more ease and flow in your business because it's just moving things. So that's one thing. So second thing is to allow time and space. Oftentimes we are so busy, we're moving, we're hustling to get things done, and we don't take enough time to just allow things to settle, to have quiet time, to think, or to not even think, but to allow thoughts to pop in that perhaps we wouldn't be able to pay attention to when we're running around. And I know for different people, depending what your lifestyle is like, This is going to be easier or more difficult depending on your circumstances. But even five minutes, 10 minutes, that can make a huge difference. And the way you do this is up to you. It's whenever it's convenient for you. It's morning, evening, afternoon, after lunch, whenever. Find what works for you and do it. Now, Amber de la Garza, who has been on this show, and I keep mentioning her because I love her work and I love her podcast, and I will link to her podcast again in the show notes. She recommends having both a morning and an evening routine. Now, I have a morning routine. I do not yet have an evening routine, but that's definitely something that I've been wanting to add to my life because I think it's important to both start and end the day with a particular intention and just really kind of winding down or winding up into the day. I really, really want to get that evening routine going. So check out the link about morning and evening routines. But this could be something like doing gratitude work, doing writing in your journal, meditating, or just sitting for five minutes, for sitting for 10 minutes in silence and just seeing what comes to you, seeing what pops into your head. Oftentimes, this is where we get intuitive nudges to do something new. This is where we get new ideas where we see things more clearly that we couldn't have seen before. And by allowing this intuition into our lives and paying attention to it, because you can't pay attention to it if you're running around all the time, you need those quiet moments. You need to give it time. You need to give it space to speak to you. When we allow for these moments, we get these fantastic ideas that we didn't have access to before that can really put us on a new path, or help us stay to the right path, or go to places that we wouldn't have necessarily thought of going before. And this can also help us to create ease and flow in our business and life. Another thing, number three, is mindset work. So shifting your beliefs, shifting your subconscious beliefs, shifting your energy around a specific topic or specific goals, that will make a big difference in creating ease and flow in your life and in your business. If you're like me, you may have a lot of beliefs around needing to engage in hard work in order to make money, order to make your business work. You might believe that things need to be difficult, that you really have to put in the effort, that you have to hustle, that it has to be really hard. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Now, you may be aware 
of having these beliefs consciously, or you may be unaware of them. And that's why it's really useful to employ techniques such as muscle testing in order to test and see which specific beliefs you have at the subconscious level that you might not even be aware of. So I've got videos for that, and I will link to that in the show notes for this episode. But shifting your beliefs around ease and flow is one of the easiest ways, the one of the fastest ways to create more ease and flow in your business and life. And you've got to get clear on what your goals are, what the actions are that you need to take in order to achieve those goals, and then work on creating belief statements or doing energy work around specific beliefs of ease and flow around taking action. So what do I mean by this? So for example, it could be something as simple as, it's easy for me to market my business. It's easy for me to sign up new clients. It's easy for me to take action on the important things I need or want to do. I have an incredible amount of ease and flow in my business. My business is full of ease and flow. My business and life are full of ease and flow. You get the idea. So that kind of thing. So if you work with belief statements, and I know a lot of the listeners do, these are some of the kinds of things you can do. And if you haven't done this before, I highly recommend that you try it. And if you have done it before, retest those beliefs. Because if you work with specific belief statements, you may know sometimes you need to revisit those statements. And it's not because you've lost them. It's not because they've stopped working. It's because you're coming at those statements from a different perspective or at a different level. And sometimes you need to rebalance those statements and it just helps shift things. It helps you shift into a new reality, a new level of working with those beliefs. So mindset work, this is the Business Mindset Podcast. That mindset work is my thing. That to me is one of the most important places to start. Number four, allow. Now this was my word of the year for 2017. And it was really difficult for me because I'm so used to, even though I talk about ease and flow, even though I do work with myself to make ease easier, I still have the tendency to push to make things work. And I think part of that is just my natural tendency. Part of that is my experience from my first business. And part of it is everything we see in terms of standard business and marketing advice has to do with push. It has to do with hustle. You've got to hustle. You've got to make it happen. And I said this just a couple of minutes ago, but I do think there are ways of taking action without that kind of pushing energy. Now, if the hustle, if the push resonates with you, do that. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it doesn't work for me. It stresses me out. It burns me out. And it might not work for you. So always, always do what works for you. So allow was my word of the year for 2017. And I really struggled with it. I had received some guidance from the guides. I think it was the end of the previous year, 2016, that I needed to start allowing more. I needed to relax. I needed to stop pushing. I needed to start allowing stuff to happen. So that's why I made it my word of the year. And and it was just really difficult because I had to resist my natural tendency to push and just kind of sit back. And it really took me the entire year, I think, to find that balance between taking action and taking inspired action, but also sitting back and allowing. It was really, really difficult for me. So I don't have the definitive answers on that. And it got to the point where towards the end of last year, I think it was around October, I started to hate that word. I just felt, ugh, and I got rid of it. I'd actually made myself, or I'd bought it on Etsy. I'd had it commissioned a little copper bracelet with the word allow to remind myself because I knew it was so difficult for me to remember to just allow the time and space. And I ended up, I left it in a forest. (laughs) near Avebury because I was so sick of it. I was so tired of that word. And I just remember I did this little ritual that I just made up as I went along and I just said, I'm done with this. I'm done with allowing. But really, I'm not. I mean, I think that's going to be a lifelong lesson for me. So even if you resist it, this is the point of me telling you the story. Even if you resist allowing, try it. And this goes back to allowing the time and space And just stepping back sometimes and taking your foot off the gas and allowing stuff to unfold. Because I find that when I push, 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 sometimes I end up pushing myself off my path, 
off my track, off of where I want to be headed because I'm so intent on doing stuff and taking action and making it happen. But when I slow down and I allow stuff, I do find that that's often when the magic happens. So I resist it, but I'm recommending it to you because it can be good when you can allow yourself. So next is respecting cycles. So whether or not you're a woman, cycles exist. We have the cycles of the year. We have the ebb and flow of the tides. We have moon cycles. Life has cycles. And if you're a woman, you have even more obvious cycles that come around every month. And it's been a while since I think I've talked about this, but you may have heard me mention one of my favorite books by Lisa Lister, who was also a guest twice on this podcast on episodes 91 and 176. And again, I will link to those in the show notes. Uh, She wrote a book called Code Red, which is a really good book on our menstrual cycles and how to plan our lives around our cycles and how that can lead to making things easier. And this was a big breakthrough for me. I think it was, I forget when the book came out, 2015 or 2016. And I had read a similar book by a different author a couple of years prior, and I just, I didn't get into it. The book was dry. I didn't like it. Lisa has a way of making cycles fun, and I just, I really got into it. And I had previously noted that there were some weeks of the month where I was super focused and I just got stuff done naturally and easily. And then there were some weeks where it was just like, ugh, I couldn't get anything done. And it was so hard to focus. And all I wanted to do was like read or take a bath or go for a walk. But I would try to push myself during those weeks. But after reading Code Red, I realized that if we respect our natural cycles, it makes it so much easier to get stuff done during the times when we are naturally more productive. So generally speaking, first week of the cycle, it's hard for me to get stuff done. I'm just not really focused. Second week, I am a machine. I just naturally go into hyper-focus mode. I get stuff done. I'm really creative. I love work. I love getting stuff done. Third week, also good for action. Fourth week, kind of winding down again. But I have learned that by respecting myself on those days and on those weeks where I'm not really feeling motivated, it helps me get even more stuff done during the weeks where I'm naturally super hyper focused. So I really recommend that you get that book and I'll link to the book in the show notes. Read it, start tracking, pay attention to when you're naturally focused and when you're naturally not focused and try playing around with that. Put that into effect and see how it works for you. And I also think it's important to point out that sometimes we are naturally focused in the mornings. Sometimes we're naturally focused in the evenings. Everyone is different. And it's also important to pay attention to when you naturally find it easy to focus and get stuff done and plan your days, if you can, around getting the tasks done during those times and then maybe leaving the other times for more creative stuff when you can just play around and have fun. Pay attention to when you naturally get stuff done during the day and try to change your work around that. I'm not good in the morning, so I don't usually start working until 11 in the morning because I just can't. I don't get anything done. My brain works really well in the evenings, so I tend to do really great work in the evenings. That's where I tend to play around with stuff, try something new, maybe go off on a tangent, design a new, I don't know, podcast artwork or something and and just lose myself. Maybe I only spend a half an hour on it, but I just get stuff done that needed to be done, but maybe I didn't realize it needed to be done. Yeah, I just evenings are great for my brain. So pay attention to when you focus most easily, when you're most creative, when you get stuff done, and try to plan your day around that. That will help you create more ease and flows. Respect not just your monthly cycles, but your daily cycles. Cycles are important. Next, I think that having really good systems or processes can help you create more ease and flow in your business. So I'm a massive fan of time blocking. 
And this is something that Amber talks about a lot. And I will try to find this specific podcast episode of hers where she talks about time batching. But basically, I just block out time in my calendar on a regular basis to do certain tasks. So repetitive things like creating solo episodes on my podcast, those get blocked out on my calendar every other week. I've got a time, usually on a Monday, to do that. I've also got every Monday morning, I've got time blocked out to promote the new podcast episode for that week. I've also got time blocked out every Monday to write an email newsletter. Now, if you're on my list, you know that doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. I've also got time blocked out to, let's see, I'm going through my calendar as I do this. It's mostly podcast stuff, but also sometimes going through and cleaning out my because I like to keep track of expenses. So I do that once a month. So I find it really useful to have specific amounts of time blocked out as recurring events on a regular basis to get stuff done. Mondays are often my days for doing stuff like that in my business. But sometimes on a Monday, I don't feel like doing all those things. But because I have the time blocked out on my calendar, as a task that I need to do, I can drag and drop it anywhere I want. So for example, yesterday I was supposed to do this episode, but I just wasn't really feeling like doing this episode. And I don't want to record a podcast episode if I'm not in the mood for it because it's not going to come out well. So I just dragged it from yesterday to, this is Tuesday now that I'm recording this, dragged it from Monday to Tuesday and I'm doing it. But I didn't delete it. I dragged it and dropped it somewhere else. And I actually did the same thing with a couple of other things because I just was not. I mean, I, I worked yesterday. I got stuff done, but I was just not feeling like doing certain things. So I dragged them to later on in the week. I dragged a couple things to Wednesday. I dragged something to Friday based on time that I had free in my schedule to do the stuff. So I find that time blocking helps me create more ease and flow in my business because I know the stuff's going to get done because I've got the time blocked out in my calendar for it. But if when I sit down to do it, I'm just not feeling it, drag it to another day. So it still gets done. I can allow myself to do the work that I feel like doing at a later date. So I really, really recommend time blocking. And using an online calendar, I use Google Calendar, to do this makes it really, really easy because you can just drag and drop around. Another simple kind of system or process that you can do is email templates. So I have standard emails written for when someone invites me to speak on a telesummit, when someone invites or when someone pitches me because they want to be on the podcast, all kinds of things. I just copy and paste and I'm maybe customize it if they've asked me specific questions that need to be answered. But creating things like that, emails that you know you have to respond to, kind of the same kind of email over and over, that makes it really, really easy to have more ease and flow in your business because you don't have to write the same email 35 times. So look at what systems, processes, things you can do to make your business easier. For the admin kind of stuff that you have to do, but maybe you don't love to do, make that stuff easier because it will make it faster for you to do that stuff, which will free up time for you to do the things that you love. Or hire someone to do it for you. You could get a VA to respond to those kinds of emails. I find it easier to just copy and paste and do it myself rather than having a middle person taking care of that for me. Systems and processes. I find give me the structure to have more ease and flow because they give me the confidence that the stuff that needs to get done will get done and they allow me to be flexible. So I know a lot of people resist a certain amount of structure in their day, but I find that having that structure gives me more ease and flow rather than making it too structured. Because like I said, you can drag stuff around and allow yourself to be flexible with your calendar in the ways that you want to be flexible. So the next thing is taking inspired action. So taking the right actions. This is something that I have learned through doing lots of mindset work and developing my intuition and working on my business from a place of intuition. Now, you may remember that a couple of years ago, I wrote a book called Business Intuition, and I'll link to that in the show notes. And that's because intuition is such an important part of my business and life. And I really couldn't live without it, which is interesting because for the most of my life, I really was not an intuitive person and I did not live with from a place of intuition. So I find it really fascinating that it's such an important part of my life now. 
So inspired action. Inspired action is not the stuff that you do because you should do or you have to do it or because someone told you you had to do it. It's the stuff that your gut tells you deep down that is right for you. You may not understand it. It may not make sense to you, but it usually does in the future when you look back on your path and you think, oh, now I know why I did that. So when I do stuff in my business, aside from the regular things that I need to do, like emails and podcasts and things like that, when I take other actions, like I think a good example would be episode 201 of last year. I called it the woo episode where I talked about how to let go of fear of expressing your woo. And I invited a handful of woo friends on to talk about the weird stuff that we do in business and how we make that kind of an open part of our business and lives. So that was something that came to me intuitively in a kind of quiet time. It just popped into my head and I thought, oh, that sounds like fun. And so I put it together, emailed the people that I wanted to talk to, made it happen. And that was something that was totally unlike my standard podcast episodes, but I loved it. So that's what I mean by inspired action. It was like it popped into my head and I did it. Taking inspired action, I find, can create more ease and flow in your business because you're operating from that place of intuition, taking action on those intuitive nudges, and that can lead to great magic in your business and life. And it can take you down paths that you might not have gone down if you'd been operating simply from a place of logic and things that make sense. So I find that taking inspired action really, really does help create more ease and flow. Same happened to me with my books. You know, a couple of years ago, I wrote a bunch of books and I continue to write books. Got a couple that I'm working on right now that will be released this year. And I just got this intuitive nudge to write a book and release it. And then I got an intuitive nudge for a second book and then a third. And I just kept feeling like I had to write these books. And, you know, every once in a while, I'll get an email from someone who's read, whether it's my business mindset books or my walking books, and they say, oh, it was really helpful to me. And it's people I've never heard of before. And I love it because those books have helped me to help people and to reach out to new people who have maybe found me on Amazon and not through my regular marketing efforts. So if you have a book in you, if you've ever thought about writing a book, just do it. If you have any questions, you email me and ask me. There's a podcast episode on how to get your book out of your head and onto Amazon. I will link to that in the show notes. Seriously, it's a great way to reach a new market of people. Do it. And if you have any questions, ask me. So again, inspired action, another great way to create ease and flow. A lot of the techniques that I shared in my business intuition book can also help you create ease and flow in business and life. So stuff like meditating, physical exercise. I find that repetitive exercise, whether it's like running on a treadmill or stuff like that, can really help me get into a state of flow because I'm not thinking. And I said running on a treadmill as opposed to like running outdoors because when I'm running outdoors, I have to be aware of don't trip on that log, like don't get your head caught up in that branch, like there's a hill. You have to think about things, but I've always found that running on a treadmill, there are no dangers. Like it's not going to rain on you. You're probably not going to trip on fall. Like you're just running like a hamster on a wheel. And I found that that would always really help me get into a state of flow. So there's so many things you can do. And check out the Business Intuition book because it's got a lot of tips, more than I can mention here, on how to ignite your intuition. But those things will also help you create more ease and flow in your business and life. Now, I also find that getting help from someone else can help you create more ease and flow in your business. So get yourself a coach. Maybe get coach that either focuses on helping you get more ease and flow in business or can help you create a plan to get more ease and flow in your business or someone who can just give you that structure. So if you find that you don't have systems and processes in your business, hire someone to help you get those because that will help you get more ease and flow in your business. So think back to some of the things that I've mentioned today and I'll go through the list again in just a minute. Think over those things and think about where you might need help and then get help with them, either from a professional or ask a friend if you know a friend is really good at systems and processes or meditation. Get help from people. You don't need to do this on your own or ask me. Maybe I can help. So again, so energy, we talked about decluttering to get the energy moving. Two, allowing time and space by creating morning and evening routines, doing the mindset work. 
allowing, respecting cycles, creating systems and processes, taking inspired action, and then just doing things to create ease and flow in other areas of your life and getting help. So those are some of the things that you can do to create more ease and flow in your business. And as someone who's been through burnout on more than one occasion, I find that it's really, really important for me to focus on ease and flow rather than push, 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 because that push energy, that hustle energy really burns me out. And ease and flow is something that I really, really resonate with. So if you also resonate with the concept of ease and flow, give it a try. Try one of the things that I've mentioned today. You don't need to do them all. Try one, see how it works for you. If you like it, great, do it again. If you don't like it, try something else. Don't try to implement everything at once, otherwise that might lead to burnout. Pick one thing and do it. And again, go with what your gut tells you. So go through that list, think about what speaks to you, and try it. But try what's right for you and what feels right for you. Because your gut knows what's right for you. I always say that my gut is smarter than my head, and that's because, as I said, intuition has become such an important part of my life. So if you have any questions, please get in touch. Let me know. You can drop me a line. Let me know what you thought about this week's episode. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and get in touch. I would love to give you a shout out on the show if you'd like. Also, I would love for you to join me in my private Facebook group, Business Mindset Alchemists, so we can continue the situation, (laughs) the conversation there. Podcasting is such a one-way conversation. I've just been talking at you for the last 36 minutes, almost 37, and I would love to hear from you. So please, if you feel inclined to join the group, head over to hollywharton.com forward slash group and ask to join, and I will approve you. Finally, whether you've been listening to the show for a while or if you just heard your first episode, if you're drawn to learning more about mindset work and you'd like to learn more about how you can work with me, or if you just have some questions, please get in touch and head over to hollywharton.com forward slash call and you can book in a call with me to learn more. I would love to work with you and help you transform your mindset using heart-centered energy work. And thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a quick review on iTunes. It would mean the world to me. I love seeing new reviews pop in. Now, as I mentioned, we have a new format for the show this year. So I'm going to be inviting in the same way that I do monthly co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey, I will be inviting quarterly special co-hosts to join me for three episodes, once a month for three months, to talk about business stuff and mindset stuff. So next week, you will get to meet, and you she's not new, you've heard her before in the podcast, but I'm going to leave it as a surprise. You will get to meet my first co-host for quarter one, and she will be joining us once a month for the next three months. So I hope you enjoy that episode. It's something that's the topic is very aligned with this week's topic, so I think you'll find it really interesting. So that is all for now. Thank you so much for joining me. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 234 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for the topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and learn more about business mindset, join my private community for entrepreneurs at hollywharton.com forward slash group that will redirect you to the Facebook group. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you so much.